Hello, wealthy, wise, and friends. This is Cindy Sophia, <clears throat> excuse me, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marrying a Rich Man. How are you doing today, my wealthy, wise, and friends? The weekend is upon us, and I have, I'm still in the process of moving, so packing and all that happy stuff. <laughs> But I'm still looking forward to a great weekend, and I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend as well. Plan for yourselves. <clears throat> Before we get on today's topic, and today I'm going to be talking about being that woman who truly is in a space of opulence, luxury, um, receiving, and influence by understanding what it is about you that makes you so special and unique in the world of life in general, as well as in dating affluent men. But before we get started, let's go ahead and do our mantra. You guys know the drill by now. Sit someplace, get comfortable. I want you to close your eyes and relax your shoulders. Make sure your face is also relaxed and just take a deep breath with me. Breathing in. Breathing out. Once again, just relaxing and say with me, I am a wealthy wife. I am a wealthy wife. And I am a wealthy wife. Once again, everything's relaxed. Take another deep breath, breathing in. And let it go. Once again, just relaxing, allow the energy to flow into your energy field, <clears throat> excuse me, as you're allowing yourself to receive your personal truth. You are a wealthy wife, and like I said, that is your goal, or a spoiled girlfriend. You are definitely in the, in the presence of affluent men who have the ability to truly help you live an incredible life through their contributions, through their honoring, cherish, providing for, and protecting you. Which in exchange, you are offering a space of appreciation, respect, honor, and, you know, enjoyment for them too. Remember, as a wealthy wife, if like I said, because I told you guys, there is a power that comes from being in the right type of long-term relationship. You know, marriage, I talked about marriage prior to in different um, videos and audios I've done about when you understand how to do it and you do it well, that contract can really, really place you in a place of incredible abundance. Yes, you can definitely do things on your own. By all means, you can. And that's part of becoming a wealthy woman, a wise woman. But it's also very beneficial to do it with the backing and support of a man who really can help you go next level or with men who understand how to help you reach your next level, <clears throat> excuse me, and also contributing to them. Because I'll say it again, we are that space of creation. We have that magnetic pull about us as women because we're women. You know, we are that space of creation. We are that, that energy that is all about mystery and, and newness and abundance and prosperity as well as peace. So when you understand that there is something unique about you, you will make better choices in reference to, excuse me, I'm sorry guys, I get hiccups for some reason. Ooh, excuse me. When you understand your uniqueness and when you understand, excuse, I am so sorry. Hang on one second. Let me get some water. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. But when you understand your uniqueness and what it is that you actually bring into all relationships, not just your romantic ones. This can be business. This can be personal. This can be many things because you should be choosing very wisely the people that you have close to you anyway, in all those ways. You can't always control, you know, your work environment if you're working for somebody else, but you can choose who you hang out with around the water cooler. And you can also choose not to hang out around the water cooler, so to speak. Because I remember when I worked the last company I worked for, going into that break room and the little t people be sitting at tables and you can just hear the negativity and feel the negativity coming off, you know, the, the various groups because they're unhappy. They were unhappy with their job. They were unhappy with, if we were at the end of the month crisis and trying to reach numbers because I was working for university at the time and... You know, there are certain expectations they had in reference to enrollments and admissions that they were expected. People were unhappy with their goals, just unhappy, unhappy, unhappy. 
And I learned to not spend a lot of time in the break room. I would go in, fix my smoothie, and piece back out and go back to my desk. Because see, you have a choice. You don't have to sit there and socialize with people. And when it comes to my work, I mean, I was acquaintance with the people that I work with, but I wasn't friends with the people that I worked with. I had like one or two people that I would spend time with outside of work. And only because I knew their mindset was similar to mine. And they were just very enjoyable people to spend time with. So that may be an environment you don't have immediate control over, but you can start making decisions to change how you're showing up and who you're allowing to show up for you in reference to work. But your personal life, your romantic life, that's all on you. You have the options. You can make the choices. So when we think in terms of you really understanding the art of influence and opulence and luxury and living this lifestyle that just feels so incredible. I mean, like I said, you guys are thinking about it. You know, we talk about the courtesan mindset, which like I said, is about a what about women who actually chose to live lives that were totally contradictory to what was expected of women during their time frame, be that past as in historical courtesans and rural mistresses and other women, you know, of that irresistible caliber or women in modern life who have chosen to really be in that space of femininity and understand how it works to their benefit. You know, anytime a woman really decides to step into that space and truly represent herself as a full-fledged woman and a woman who is very comfortable in her femininity and is comfortable receiving from the masculine, you guys see it. They want people want to tear into her. People want to say things. People just go berserk sometimes. And what I've learned over the time is it's just that those are people that are just very unhappy. And because they're choosing not to learn the skills that they need to learn to change their lives and to show up differently, they're mad at anybody else who takes the time to do it. Once again, I respect anybody's decision to live their lives the way they want to live their lives. That is entirely up to them. They are grown folks. Their decision. But I will not allow the energy to spill over into my space. And I teach my clients how to not allow it to interfere with their decisions in reference to their lives. You know, I told you guys, we have the Courtesan Mindset Masterclass. The six-week series is going on as we speak. And today is the last day to enroll because we did class number one last week. And it was wonderful. You know, I got the homework back that I, that I sent out to them and to my uh, students. And I'm enjoying reading it. Um, beautiful, beautiful ladies. And this week, we're going to be going over your special sauce. We're going to be going over, you know, really starting to understand what it is about you that is unique and that you bring that just requires and causes people to just want to pour into you. You know, because I talk about this all the time, a bit, trying to be a carbon copy of somebody else. Why? You know, to me, that's just lazy. You know, you're going to put all this energy and effort into being somebody else when you could just take that same energy and, and effort and put it into being a better version of you. Take it and learn how to show up as your best self. And I realize lots of times that that lack of desire to do that is because you feel you're not good enough due to the messaging of your childhood, due to the messaging of society, be that through, once again, your religion, um, affiliations, um, Family, family can be a nightmare at times. Friends and associations, because some of your friends that you people you think are friends are not your friends. Like I said, tell them you're going to do something great with your life. You'll find out who truly is a friend and not a friend. Because the ones who are your friends will be there for you 100% or to the best of their ability. And the ones who are not your friends are going to tear into you. So you have to be very conscious about who you allow in your space. But the most important thing is to, once again, do you. Like I said, think of the special gifts you have to offer the world. And even if you feel that you have nothing because you've been taught that you are nothing, that is incorrect. Don't allow somebody else's opinion to guide your life. Why did you come here? Why did you as a spirit living in a space of, of, of everything, why would you take the time out to put yourself into this little tiny body coming from everything? Understand the spirit world is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Wisdom, love, energy, laughter, joy, prosperity, everything is fantastic. But you chose, for whatever reason, for whatever experiences you want to have, you chose to take a portion of your spirit and pour it into this body. Now, unfortunately, we get amnesia as we pass through the birth canal and we forget sometimes what we came here to do. But we have the option, obviously, to revisit, to discover through life lessons, through whatever, through options and choices, how to get back to our origins, meaning how to get back to what it was we wanted to do. And I'm sure most of you, some folks did come here to suffer. Believe me, there are some folks who did. For whatever reason, they wanted to come and suffer. 
Okay, fine. Maybe that was something they never experienced before and they just wanted to see what it felt like. Okay, that's probably a small portion of people. But I probably can say this with, with confidence. Most of you do not come here to suffer. Most of you didn't come here to be in crappy ass, shitty ass relationships. Most of you didn't come here to allow people to talk to you all crazy. Most of you didn't come here to work jobs that you hate. Most of you didn't come here to be alone and lonely. You know, so many of you want to be in relationships. I mean, good relationships, wonderful relationships, especially in reference to men that have the capacity to truly help you live an exquisite lifestyle. They can show you the way, they can contribute to you financially, they can put you in front of the right contacts and connections. Like I said, you're doing the work, obviously, to make that possible because you're getting out there and putting yourself in situations where you're going to meet these kind of men. Because I get the giggle. Sometimes you guys are telling me you want to do this, but you're still too scared to get out there and meet people. Once again, UPS man, United Postal Service is not going to deliver a wealthy, rich man, a fluent man, affluent man to your doorstep. I'm serious. If they could make that happen, I would have done it by now. Trust me, I'm very resourceful. And I haven't figured out how to make that happen just yet. So that means I have to go out there and actually be present in places where I know they're going to be affluent men. And an affluent lifestyle. And meeting really great people, men and women. Because I enjoy the friendships of some really great women as well. But you can't keep holding back. You know, it's one of the reasons why I guess I'm doing the courtesan mindsets, the, the talent, the master class, because it really is about helping women tear down those fears and really taking a look at them. You know, I asked in the first class, I asked them, you know, th- give me the names of three women that they actually admire and that are in the courtesan mindset that are successful women, you know, be they historical, be they pro- uh, modern day. I asked them, tell me three, give me three names, three women and why you like them. What is it about them that inspires you? What is it about them that intrigues you? What is it about them? That makes you think, wow, she's awesome. And then I ask my ladies to, you know, find out. Maybe there's some traits that this woman has that they may share. Or maybe there are traits or attributes of this woman that they would like to acquire. You know, there's nothing wrong with admiring people. There are people that I absolutely admire. You know, some of them are famous. Some of them are just people that I know growing up, you know, within my family. You know, we can find inspiration in so many places. But it's supposed to be just inspiration. We're not supposed to try to take over that person's life and become them. Because I'll say it again. You can, you, you'd, why, be a, why be a second, why be a, why be a carbon copy? Why, why be an imitation? Why not be the original? Because I told you, the original has got it going on. I use Kim Kardashian as the example because for a while they're on Instagram. It's all I saw were Kim uh, Kardashian and, Chloe, and uh, Kylie clones. It was like, good God. For the longest, every time I turned up on a makeup tutorial, it was popping up on my my feed. It was somebody who was trying to imitate Kim's look, and or Kylie's look, and it was like, okay, why? Once again, do you want to be a carbon copy of somebody else when the original is knocking it out the park, and you're never going to reach that level of success that the original person has because they're just being authentically themselves. You know, excuse me. The goal is to be your best person. The goal is to understand what inspires you and intrigues you and interests you. How can you be a person of influence? And I'm not talking about being like, you know, an influencer on Instagram or social media, nothing like that. How can you be somebody that in your community or in whatever sphere you're in who has a positive impact on other people's lives? And it starts with your life first. You know, it's getting out of your head. It's getting out of that, that lack mindset. It's getting out of that, that, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, 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 you know, what if, oh, I wish, um, um, you guys already know. I talk about enough of my past in our prior videos about, you know, people trying to wait, put their lives on hold until some women I know are tiny women and they think they, they, they think they have issues in reference to dating affluent men because they don't think men want tiny women or, or skinny women. Yeah, I've heard that too. Just so you guys know, women of all sizes think that sometimes think that they're not good enough to date affluent men. I'm like, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your personality and how you present yourself and how confident you are in being yourself. Like I said, some men want petite women, uh, tiny petite women. Some men want fuller figure women. And some guys like with ladies in between. I'll say it one more time. There are different types of affluent men all around the world and across the country. And they don't all have the same desire and needs. A high maintenance woman out of Miami or Beverly Hills or 
you know, Upper East Side of New York would fall flat on her face if she went to the Midwest. Because a Midwest millionaire, billionaire is going to look at her like, wow, she is just way too much work. You know, she's stressed out, she's spazzed out, she's just too much. You know, he's going to want somebody that's going to be more comfortable, is going to be maybe not as glammed out, can become beautiful and glamorous when she needs to, but she's not going to be sitting in front of a plastic surgeon every three days. She's not going to be trying to get everything done to herself to totally alter her appearance because he has a different mindset. He wants a more natural looking woman. Once again, not throwing shade against all those procedures because once again, there are some groups that that is a requirement. Seriously. I get that. You guys, I guess I've been around a while. I know this. There are some cliques where that is a requirement. But that's not everybody. So you have to understand that, you know, when you understand how to be good about yourself, then you become an influencer because people are going to look at you and be so happy and relieved to see somebody actually doing life on their terms based upon their personal brand of beauty, their personality, what excites them, what makes them so special and beautiful and wonderful and mysterious and fun and, and, and gorgeous and prosperous. You know, like I said, you're here to live an extraordinary life. You're here to date extraordinary exceptional men you are here to marry whoever the hell it is you want to marry be in a relationship who you want to be in relationships with and nobody has the right to tell you what is or is not right for you you know i excuse me i really do have hiccups today wow i know i go off on a rant periodically when i hear women talk about you know and I, when I see this, you know, you don't need a man or, you know, if somebody says she wants to get married, I've seen women come after women like that. You know, why do you want to get married? Oh, that's so dumb. Or that's just too stupid. Why would you want to tie yourself down to a man? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. You don't want to, you don't want to be with somebody. That's fine. My thing is always this because some of the women that are saying that, and I've learned this through experience. I've learned this once again through, once again, all the years I've been coaching and working with women and tutoring. I've been doing this for a very long time in some capacity. And what I've learned is most women that are telling other women what they shouldn't do and why they shouldn't need or why they shouldn't want are angry themselves, have a bad taste in their mouth. There's a bitterness about them because maybe their relationships have not been the best with men. But then you got to take a look at yourself and see what it is that you're doing, meaning they need to take time out to self-reflect and look inside and see, okay, what are you putting out there that keeps drawing these men to you? Because once again, what you put out there, you're going to get back. Um, law of the land, law of life, law of the universe. So if you are somebody who really, 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 really does not want to be in a relationship because you're fearful of relationships because you keep repeatedly choosing the wrong men, then take a look at yourself and see what you need to do to make better decisions and what you need to do to heal any prior wounds that are causing you not to be in that space of receiving a great man or great men. Or even great female friendships, because sometimes those friendships of the women that you know are also are destructive as all get out. You know, people who are in certain pain points will do their damnedest to bring other people down because misery loves company. So when I run across people who actually want to have that de debate me on the fact that why would a woman get married? Why does she have to get married? I hate that. And no one says we have to get married. We don't have to do anything we don't want to do. Let's be very clear. We don't. But if that a woman has sat there and told me that she wants to get married, I'm supportive of that. My thing is, my question is usually why? Are you getting married because that's just something you, you want to be a wife and you have, you know, these, these, these ideas that you want to do and, and you feel that it would expand your life in a way that's very positive to have a spouse? Maybe it's because you want to have children and you want to be able to stay home and raise your kids. What are your reasonings for getting married? Because if it's fear-based, the marriage is going to be a problem. I told you guys, something happens, something clicks off the woman's brain when she hits her mid-30s that if she's not in a long-term relationship, not married, not having kids, panic sets in. The biological clock is ticking because they have women convinced that, you know, our biological clocks stop ticking and that, you know, that we're over the hill and too old to have babies once we, you know, turn, start pushing 40 and all this craziness. But you understand and that your eggs are getting old and basically you're just, you know, over the hill and done for. And they start ticking 
the start starts clock starts ticking in the early 30s and it's like a booming sound in some women's head by the time they're in the mid to late 40, 30s. They're just freaking out. So if that's the headspace you're in talking about you want to get married because you feel that you have to be married to have your children and you know it can be beneficial to be married and have children, obviously, if you've got a man who actually is going to step up and be a great father and a great support in that household. I mean, personal choices. You guys know I'm a single mom, and that was a choice. It's not for everybody. Trust me. It is not. For, believe me. Single motherhood definitely is not easy, but I chose it for a variety of reasons, which I am not going to go into, um, but it worked out for me. But it's understanding why you want to do the things you're doing are you choosing it from a place of power not a place of fear because you're going to have to once again be confident in your decisions to move your life forward you know when you're living in a space of influence and opulence and luxury you have to understand that you deserve it you have to understand that it's your birthright it is your birthright to receive wonderful things. It is your birthright to prosper and to thrive and to live a truly successful life based upon what it is you desire and that you're willing to put the energy and effort into learning about. You know, I've told you guys, uh, you know, a lot of what I teach is mindset. It really is about the mindset. It's about allowing, allowing yourself, seriously allowing yourself to live a full life going to be ups and downs, ins and out moments. Yes, there will be moments where you're going to be sitting like, God, this sucks. But sometimes in order for you to finally break through, you have to have some sucky moments because you need those moments to finally break old behaviors, bad behaviors that have kept you stuck for potentially decades or for years. You know, to be a person who understands the art of influence and opulence and luxury and living a luxurious and lavish life. You know, it takes you knowing Not believing. I don't do the word believe anymore. I do the word knowing. Because belief is still kind of like, well, you know, I'm I'm thinking it's most likely going to happen. No. Believing, no. It's about knowing. And when you say I know, that means you are absolutely clear and have no doubts that things are going to work out. Even if they look like they're they're about to go sideways. You just know that, you know what? That situation has been handled. I'm good. I am at peace. Things are working out exactly as they need to work out in my best interest. And I'm happy. So it's about the knowing that opulence is yours. And you go out there and you allow yourself to experience opulence. Because one of the things that we require, as a matter of fact, I do this in almost, and actually I think I do it and require this in all the coaching and the tutoring and the classes that I do, is that you guys get out there and start experiencing a more luxurious life. Take yourselves out to eat. Keep an open mind. Here's something else I got to put out there because I just realized this. I was talking to somebody. Um, I don't remember when. Was it was this week or last week. And I realized that sometimes people have these really hardcore preconceived notions and prejudice about, you know, affluent people from different parts of the country and, or different parts of the world. And I thought, okay, that's going to be potentially an issue because if you're walking into situations and you just have this, this, this conception of what you think a certain person's like from a certain part of the country or a certain area, you may blow off somebody that could wind up being a really great person for you because you're walking in a door prejudice, so to speak. You're walking in a door with preconceived notions and misconceptions. So my thing is always this, when I'm working with my clients, I tell them, I go, keep an open mind, you know, go to an event. Because I told you, the big thing is, what if I go and I'm the only person of color there? Uh, If you go to the right event, you probably will be. Or one of a handful. Understand that that's just how it's going to be the further up the money, money train or track you go. The further up you go, the fewer people of color you're going to see, depending on where you go, where you live and the activities you're selecting for yourself. Don't get me wrong. There are places, there are plenty of people of color that come together with money that are doing things. But once again, depending on where you're located and your activities. And also going to depend on the type of wealth that you're looking to acquire. It's just going to be different, guys. I can't tell you, I can't say it in a way. Sometimes it's just going to be different. And sometimes, like I said, as you're breaking out of your comfort zones, you're going to be in situations that are going to make you the only person there or one of a few. You must be okay with that. You must not walk in the door. You must walk in this way, knowing 
Once again, there goes that word again, knowing that everything's good and knowing that you're going to have a great time. may not be hanging off the chandelier type of fun, but you're going to walk in because when I work with my clients, and this goes with the uh, teleconference classes as well, the teleseminars, you know, we talk about the art of communication. That's in everything that we do, you guys. You know, you're never going to master, completely master the art of communication. You're going to become masterful with it because I'm masterful in reference to communication. I've been doing it forever. But there are even things that I still learn and things I still finesse and fine tune. You know, kitty cat just woke up. Hey, baby. Hi, cutie. Um, but there's still things I fine tune. Just because I, I love, you guys know, I love words. I love speaking. I love, I love expressing, self-expression and teaching other people how to express themselves. And I love the art of spell casting. Your words are spells. You are casting spells over your life constantly by the words that you say and you use. So why would you not make a conscious effort to learn how to do it well? I mean, seriously, why would you not learn how to say things and cast the kind of spells over your life, meaning your words, that are going to bring you the things that you desire? So when I work with my clients, we, they have conversation skills. They're learning how to ask questions, to receive information from people without sounding like they're digging for details, not sound like interrogators, not sounding boring, meaning when they, people ask them about themselves or just give them the same standard boring-ass answer most people give when they're networking, what do you do for a living, how long have you been here, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> okay, that just ugh, irks me. It just drives me nuts because most people are lousy when it comes to networking because nobody wants to put in the effort and learn how to communicate. You're never going to be able to level your life if you don't understand the skill of communication. I'm being truthful. Some of you are scared to get out there and date affluent men or go into affluent situations because you're terrified that you're going to say the wrong thing. What if I say something and I look dumb? And? Uh, you don't know everything. You can't know everything. Hell, they don't know everything. So what I always do if I'm in a situation, I'm not sure about something. Somebody asked me a question or something I don't know about. I'm like, you know what? That's a great question. I'll be honest. I have no idea. I've never thought about it. I've never looked into it. What do you know about the topic? Tell me. Please tell me. I'm interested in learning more. I have no issue or problem not looking like a know-it-all. Because I don't know it all. Like I said, you guys, I know a ton of stuff. I'm an avid reader. I'm somebody who definitely is into acquiring knowledge and applying the knowledge that I acquire. I love life. I enjoy living. So I'm going to expose myself to different things. And that means I'm going to expose myself to new things and put myself into situations where I'm uncomfortable. So if I'm going to encourage it for myself and require it of myself, you better believe I require it of the women that I work with. Hell, I require it of my children. Yeah, my kid, but then you know what? My kids are beast in the best possible way. You know, they take chances, they take risks, they will, you know what? They step out of their comfort zone. You know, and is everything perfect for them? No, they're living a human experience, but they live lives that people envy and people think happened to them because of luck. No, it didn't happen because of luck, it happened because they worked their asses off of what they've got. And because they understand that, you know, anything that happens, even if it's not positive initially, this too will pass. And if they keep their eyes focused on what it is they desire, they're going to receive it. It happens for them every time. Sometimes it comes in sideways, upside down and inside out. <laughs> but eventually, if they don't take their eye off the prize, they receive what they're looking for. And that's the same in my life. So it'll be the same for you. But you've got to be willing, like I said, to get out of that comfort zone. So for those of you, like I said, that are terrified still, you're talking about it. Talk, 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 talk. You're on social media. You're asking questions. You're asking questions and you're getting feedback and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting to take that first move to get out there and finally start dating some affluent men or just getting exposed to affluent situations. Stop waiting. Your life is passing every single day. Every moment that you're living is passing into history your history. And if you're still sitting there talking about the same stuff and you're still not receiving any results, that's your fault. Okay. It's your fault. Opportunities are all over the place for you guys to live the lives that you want. Like I said, sometimes it'll happen rapidly because a person has been working in the energy field behind the scenes. Sometimes when things, things appear to happen fast for somebody, they've been working and grinding it out for five years, six years, 10 years. As I'm saying, sometimes you don't know the backstory of some of these successful people that you're seeing. They've been at it for years. 
but because they're willing to take that chance and they understand that life is an art. You know, you want to become an artist and you want to become a skilled person, you know, have that skill of living an exquisite and extraordinary life. But you're going to have to learn a skill set to make that happen if you're not around it on a regular basis. And once again, that's why I do the classes that I do. That's why I'm seriously loving the master classes that I've been doing, the six-week teleconference series or teleseminar series I've been doing. Because it gives me a chance, like I said, to pour information into open-minded women and watching how they flourish and thrive, watching the self-awareness that happens. You know, I have this happen, obviously, with my private tutoring clients. I love it. I'll say it again. I love to see you folks, you women, thrive. It takes nothing from me or my life to see you successful. Matter of fact, the more of us out there that really are thriving in the right headspace, guess what? It opens up more abundance for all of us because as we pour into each other, more happens. Guess what? There's always more. Always more. It's never, only the time it becomes less is if you're trying to grab onto something, hold onto something, hold it tight, and, uh, you know, I just can't give this up. Uh, there's an old saying, I'm paraphrasing it, that, you know, clench fist. You can't receive anything if your hands are clenched together in fists. You have to open up your hands and cup your hands so that things can be poured into you and that you have the capacity to receive. And that's the same with your life. If you're all uptight and you're all worried and all stressed out and you're all fearful and you're all scared and you're like, Ugh, you're not going to receive. You can't because there's no room. Or if you're hanging on to habits and bad habits, habits that are, and I say bad, I mean habits that just are not benefiting you. You're the one putting the brakes on your life. Why? 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 Why are you waiting? I would love to get some feedback on that from some of you. Why are you waiting? What are you scared of? I guess I told you guys, I read through the social media. I don't want, I don't social media very often. I mean, I told you guys I'm terrible at posting on my Facebook page. Um, try to be better next year. I really am, but just so much going on this year. Um, just things that I have to take care of and close out before I can really focus on doing some other stuff. And that's fine. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. You know, I respect that my life has to go at a slower pace in some areas just due to some, like I said, other endings that I've had happen in my life recently. But what are you waiting on? Seriously, why are you waiting? Why? You want, you desire. So like I said, when I get on social media and I see people in feeds, and like I said, sometimes I see people that I, I've spoke to personally, and I see them still asking the same questions, still having the same problems, the same issues that we may have discussed six months ago, nine months ago, a year ago, when they actually had a private call with me. And they're still talking about the same stuff. They're still stuck in that headspace of, of lack of lack of opportunity. And when I know, because I've talked to them personally, that they have opportunity, that they have the ability to meet affluent men, that they have the capacity because I know what they're doing in reference to their private lives and their personal lives. But it's the fear. It's the fear. It's the fear. What if I fall on my face? What if I sound stupid? So the excuses come. Well, if I lose a little more weight, if I change this, if I move. Yeah, sometimes you might need to move. That might be a possibility. You might have to move. But even then, you can still practice in your area. Um, I'm not this. All the excuses begin. All the excuses ever do is keep you stuck. So once again... Learning how to live a life that is affluent, happy, prosperous, luxurious, opulent, and having and be in that space of influence, that is an art that you must allow yourself to open up and receive and to learn how to and to be and take begin to learn how to master. You know, you want to be world class. You know, this lifestyle is not about being a jack of all trades, just so you know. You do need to specialize. That's why I love the courtesans so much. We talk about them, the courtesans, the royal mistresses, and the women that I know like that are living their own lives and living extremely well and living beautifully and have the support of affluent men. They have learned how to be and represent the way they do. They still study. They still research. They still change up how they speak. They learn how to adapt based upon their audience, meaning who is the personality of the man that they're sitting in front of or the men that they're sitting in front of. 
And some people say, oh, that's fake. No, it's not fake. That is understanding that not everybody's going to be able to receive your message the same way. So you don't become fake. You just simply adapt and change how your, your style of speaking, for example. You know, maybe this person's more visual, so you talk in more visual terms. Maybe they're more into hear, more into sound. You change it and offer words that are going to relate to sound. Did you hear this one? I just heard this great music uh, song by so and so on the radio. Do you like this particular artist? What is your favorite music? Maybe there's somebody who is more into and into the feeling side of life. So you talk in terms of feeling. Oh my gosh, I went shopping the other day and I was looking for some new Egyptian cotton sheets, and oh my gosh, I ran my hands across and they felt. So that's not being fake. That's understanding how to be able to reach that person in a way that makes them feel comfortable. See, that's how you expand your life. It's not about just you, you, you. And a lot of times people are struggling because they are very selfish. Now, and I mean selfish in a way that they're not willing to open up and learn what they need to learn. They expect everybody to make the adaptations to them. And when they don't know what they want, people can't adapt to you if you can't articulate your needs and desires. So once again, what is it that you want and desire? You know, are you serious about this? Do you want to be a woman of influence? Do you want to be that woman that men just can't get enough of? Be they, you know, up and coming, be they ordinary guys, be they affluent men, whatever. Affluent men, whatever. How do you want to show up? And are you finally ready to give yourself some skills to make that happen? I'll say it again. This Today is the last day to enroll in the Courtesan Mindset Masterclass. Like it's, and this is a time you guys, like I said, have access to me. I'm just having fun with this. I'm loving the conversations. I'm enjoying the questions that I receive when I do these uh, six-week series. I just started doing them. Like I said, I don't know how many I'm going to do next year, to be honest with you, because i got some other things going on with Wealthy Wife and my other business. But right now, they're a blast. So if you want to be part of the group, if you want to be part of my courtesans and training, so to speak, go ahead and click on the link and get yourself enrolled. You know, there is, I did do a four-month uh, four payment plan. You know, take a look at it. You know, you have the uh, the paid in full tuition, and then I did break it down to four monthly payments. For those of you that, you know, that may be an option that you require. However you go about it, this is your chance. And right now, guys, it's the holiday season. This is a time where people are at high spirits. This is a time where people are feeling very generous and very giving. Why would you not want to be out there in that energy? And it's about opulence right now. Look at the decorations. Every place you go, everything is sparkly and glittery and shiny and red and gold. And red and gold are wealth colors, just so you know. Uh-huh. Why do you think the Chinese love them so much? And by the fact, they're two of my favorite colors. I love red and gold. Red and gold combination. And I love royal purple and gold. Another one of my favorite color combinations. Um, this tis the season to be jolly. So why would you not want to learn the skill sets that you could have to take you out there and to start partaking of this abundant time of the year? So I'm going to close out this video slash audio, audio slash video. I would love to have you join me. Take your foot off the brake and let's give yourself the opportunity to learn some skills and have some fun so that you could actually learn how to do the right kind of spell casting, so to speak, over your life and receive more of the things that you desire or to gain more clarity about what it is you desire so you can actually start, start allowing it into your life. Either way. You guys know I adore you. Oh my gosh, I could just hug each one of you. I do. I appreciate you. I honor you. And I want you to live your best life. Stop waiting. Talk to you guys soon. Once again, click on a button below. Love you and talk to you later. Bye-bye.